Latoya Cantrell, originally from Los Angeles, moved to Louisiana in 1990 when she attended Xavier University, where she earned a BA in sociology. Cantrell went on to make history in the city of New Orleans in 2018 after she took office as the first female mayor of the city. Before becoming mayor, she served about six years on the New Orleans City Council and completed an executive training program at Harvard Kennedy School. There's been a lot of drama surrounding Mayor Cantrell and lots of criticism from using city money for expensive flights to the high crime in the city and the city's management of its PD. Once again, Mayor Cantrell is in the news, this time for her troubling behavior at a Mardi Gras celebration. It's currently Mardi Gras season, so the city is filled with celebrations every day. New Orleans decided to welcome tourists for the 2023 season. Things are pretty much back to normal now. And yes, it's usual for the mayor to participate in these activities. Was not normal is Mayor Cantrell's behavior at a recent parade. Take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates. Shout out to the Ninth Ward, the Florida area, Uptown, Mid-City, Gentilly, New Orleans East, West Bank. And I can't forget about the folks visiting the French Quarter and the locals working in the area. If you're watching from New Orleans, let me know below. New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell was seen yelling and flipping off riders on a carnival parade float. In a video that circulated on social media on Sunday, it was not known what prompted Mayor Cantrell's outburst, but the clip came from a citizen who attended the parade who wished to remain anonymous. The video appears to have been recorded by a float rider using a cell phone. This occurred the day before on Saturday as the crew of Tux made its way past the mayor's official parade stand. In the video, Cantrell is heard yelling. To some, she appeared a bit drunk, but she gave a middle finger to the writers. You have many people, they're like, it's not a big deal, and they're defending Mayor Cantrell, saying that just because she's a mayor, it doesn't mean that she can't react and have emotions like a normal person, while others are shocked at her out-of-control behavior. The city's communications director, Gregory Joseph, came out defending Mayor Cantrell with a statement where he said Mardi Gras is a time for satire and jest, all in good fun. The city has been enjoying a safe and healthy carnival and went on to say they will move forward and continue celebrating. Mayor Cantrell has been under a lot of scrutiny, especially in her second term. On top of that, she's facing a recall from a group that's only about 1,000 signatures away from getting the required signatures to force a vote on her future. All right, we have breaking news right now. A recall petition has officially been filed against New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell. For more of this development, let's send it over to WDSU anchor Travis Mackle in the newsroom. Travers, what can you tell us about this? Yeah, Daryl, a major breaking story. About five minutes ago, a recall petition was formally filed against New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell that happened at the Secretary of State Kyle Ardwin's office in Baton Rouge. A New Orleans woman named Eileen Carter. She's a former employee of the mayor. She's also the sister of former state senator Karen Carter Peterson is the person who filed the petition. So here's how all of this works as there is a lot to unpack. Basically, the clock is running right now. You have 180 days to get 53,000 signatures from registered voters to recall Mayor Latoya Cantrell. If you get all of that, then the governor has to call a special election and then voters will vote to decide if the mayor is recalled. It would only be a simple majority after that. The hard part in the state of Louisiana is getting 53,000 verified signatures to say they want a recall election and you are on the clock. Once again, you have 180 days to do that and the clock, Daryl, has started right now. During this push for a recall, she's been pretty silent on it, but her meltdown that she's having could have a lot to do with the pressure that she's under. Here's my problem with Mayor Kentro. As the mayor of a city, you're the leader. You're in charge of managing the city, representing the city and its citizens. You have to have decorum. You have to be professional. You can't get out here popping off like a city girl. Not to mention, Mayor Cantrell is over 50 years old. She should know better. There's no excuse. I've been seeing everything that she's been dealing with for the last couple of years. Whenever she's questioned about what she's doing to stop the carjackings, the robberies, it's like she's always denying or downplaying things, but never talk about what she's going to do about it. And although that's going on in a lot of these major cities, these population centers, 
One thing that cannot be denied is Mayor Cantrell's city under her watch is now the murder capital. New Orleans making national headlines as the murder capital of the U.S. Absolutely. Metropolitan Crime Commission says per capita, homicides are higher than every other city in the United States. WDSU reporter Shay O'Connor joins us now live in New Orleans East, where the Metropolitan Crime Commission says is one of the hot spots for crime. Occasionally, I do have one or two shots, but the, the, the other night, it was quite a few of them. And I was hoping none would come this way. Ernest Bell Jr. says the crime has gotten way out of hand. It, it's a fear. You, you never know when you, when you, if you're going to come back home. The way things are now. It, it, no one in office that I know is trying to do anything to help this city become like it used to be. Meanwhile, homicides are up by 46% from the same time last year, up 141% since 2019. We've been there before, uh, but when we were there before, it was in the mid-90s. Rafael Goenechi, the president of the Metropolitan Crime Commission, says the national headlines are not shocking, and it's impacting the city as a whole. The consequences of these crime problems mean that citizens that have an option to go someplace else are going to do so. It means that uh, some of the groups that are responsible for recruiting businesses to come here and recruiting uh, tourists and conventions to come here have a tougher sales job now. Goenechi says 50 percent of all violent crime is happening in two police districts, New Orleans East, in Central City. If 50% of the violent crime is concentrated in two police districts, and there's eight districts, and you can reduce violent crime by 50% in those two districts, you're reducing violent crime by 25% in the city of New Orleans. And MCC officials, they tell me that if there were higher pay raises and, and better work conditions for NOPD officers, that would help when it comes to failing NOPD numbers. Even the time when Mayor Cantrell was questioned about using the city's money to fly all over the place, she said she wasn't paying anything back. I mean, she doubled down on it with a nasty attitude and disposition, flat out saying, I'm not paying nothing. And then sometime later, she turned around and humbled herself and said that she was going to pay it back. The police department is horrible, arguably one of the worst in the state, which is why officers are leaving left and right. The city is running amok, basically running itself, a bunch of chaos, and this is all under Mayor Cantrell's watch. And if all of this wasn't enough, you have a woman who recently came out saying that her husband cheated on her with Mayor Cantrell. That woman is currently divorcing her husband, and in the divorce filing, she mentioned that her husband admitted to having an affair with Mayor Cantrell. Her husband is a part of the New Orleans PD and on the mayor's executive protection team. In the divorce filing, the wife of Jeffrey Vappi claims her husband has been in an ongoing inappropriate relationship with Mayor Cantrell since May 2021. And side note, I know some of you are like you've seen him somewhere before. That will be first 48, but yeah. She says her husband admitted to having relations with the mayor and also cited specific dates in August and September 2022 when the affair took place, allegedly. That includes August 2nd, 2022, the day a public security camera in front of a city-owned apartment showed her husband spent five hours and 40 minutes of his workday inside of the apartment with the mayor. Good afternoon, I'm Lauren McCoy. And I'm Liz Reyes. Well, new at this hour, a new court filing accuses the mayor of New Orleans of having an extramarital affair with a former member of her security team. And the filing raises more questions about her use of taxpayer time and money following Lee Zurich's series of outside the office investigations. The wife of NOPD officer Jeffrey Vappi filed an amended divorce petition this month, claiming in November of last year, she became aware of an inappropriate relationship between Vappi and who she refers to as Mrs. LC. And a source says that Mrs. LC is New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell. And the filing alleges Officer Vappi has been in an ongoing sexual relationship with Cantrell since May of 2021. And that's the same month Vappi joined her executive protection team. The filing goes on to claim that Cantrell and Vappi engaged in a sexual relationship and lists specific dates. Most of those dates were detailed in a series of our outside the office reports, which showed Cantrell and Vappi spending long hours during the workday at a city-owned apartment. 
In the filing, Vappi's wife says her husband confirmed to her that he was involved in an adulterous affair with Mrs. L.C., who again, a source confirms, is Mayor Latoya Cantrell. Vappi was removed from the mayor's security team as our series of investigative reports aired. Now, this new filing raises severe ethical and potentially criminal issues for both Officer Vappi and Mayor Cantrell. And joining us now with more insight on this is Diller University political analyst Dr. Robert Collins. Of course, Dr. Collins, thank you so much for joining us. So let's talk about Officer Vappi right now. With this new information that we received today, what could this mean for him as an NOPD officer? Could there be any criminal implications? Well, of course, they're just allegations at this point. But if the allegations are proven, the issue is, is going to be that uh, there are NOPD regulations about being supervised by uh, by um, someone and having an inappropriate relationship with your supervisor. So that could potentially be the conflict there, is, is if he's having an inappropriate relationship with the mayor, and the mayor, of course, was his supervisor at the time, there could be a violation of internal NOPD policy. And our Fox 8 sources confirming that the LC named in the divorce amendment is Mayor Latoya Cantrell. Are there ethical or potential, once again, the same question based on these claims, potential ethical or criminal implications for her? Yes, because um, in, in, in addition to the NOPD regulations, there are also civilian regulations uh, within City Hall with, with uh, city employees that you cannot have an inappropriate relationship with a subordinate. And, and, and again, the same, the same rules uh, would apply. If these allegations can be proven, then there, there could be uh, ethical or even legal uh, conflicts because, because the mayor uh, was, in fact, his supervisor. Oh, and one quick note on that, but ethically, who holds her accountable ethically? Well, et I mean, ethically, it would, it, it, you know, it would have to be if, if a, you know, if, of course, if a, if a crime is committed, it would have to be the, the, the district attorney. Um, but ethically, it would, it would be up to the city council to investigate this and, and uh, levy any sanctions. A again, up to, you know, criminal, in, uh, up to criminal sanctions. Criminal sanctions would have to be investigated by the district attorney. Mayor Cantrell, who is also a married woman, denied the affair in a text message to a local newspaper, calling the allegation sexist BS, although it's a woman who's calling her out for sleeping with her husband. Now, if this had been a man who was in office and had an affair, the media would have gone wild with his story and everyone would be pushing for him to get out of office. So every time a man in leadership is called out for having an affair on his wife, is that also sexist? I don't know, somebody please tell me. I don't expect for Mayor Cantrell to ever take responsibility for anything. She can't even take responsibility for her own behavior. How are you out here talking about women empowerment and being the first female to do this and that, but you have women out here talking about you're sleeping with their husband? And then everyone is always defending this woman from other city employees who also don't care about the city either to many of the citizens who are aware of the issues in the schools, which I discussed here before, the PD, the crime, the local economy, the lack of opportunities for the people in the poverty areas, all of that. They know what's going on, but they refuse to hold Mayor Cantrell accountable. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started below in the comments. What do you think about this city girl mayor? Special thank you to our sister Queen Smoke. She's always showing support in the comments. I appreciate you as well as our brother Lionel. Thank you Lionel for your support as well. And shout out to Brian of Louisiana for sending this story in. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.